Hi ladies! Welcome to Questions, God Questions with Pastor Marty today. He's here to answer. We have many more questions that we're going to get to today. So if we don't answer yours today, we will be here next week. <laughs> God willing <Sure. laughs> to answer them. Um, but I appreciate your questions because I'm learning a lot from them. I have to like go in and research and find out what some of this stuff is before I yeah. <laughs> even hand it off. World. Yes. Um, but let's get started. So the first one we have is where in the Bible is reference to boundaries as in boundaries and respect? For example, minding your own business, you haven't walked in their shoes. Okay, so probably the key text is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 10 to 12. Uh, and this is, this is what Paul says about minding your own business. He says, indeed, you already show your love for all the believers throughout Macedonia, speaking to the Thessalonians, says that even so, dear brothers and sisters, we urge you to love them even more. Make it your goal to, here, here's the advice, live a quiet life, minding your own business. <laughs> there we go, right there. <laughs> uh, and working with your hands, uh, just as we instructed you before. Then people who are not Christians will respect the way you live, and you will not need to depend on others. So that's, that's probably the verse for minding your own business. Uh, and you know doing the work that God has called you to do um, there's other ones that mm -hmm. you might expect second Thessalonians chapter 3 verses 11 to 13 Paul says uh, we hear that some of you are living uh, in idleness you know you're not working it's kind of sitting around um, it says you're not you're not busy working you are busy interfering in other people's lives Ooh, how? <laughs> we order uh, we order and encourage such people by the Lord Jesus the Messiah to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. So to mind your own business and quit sticking your nose in other people's business. So that thing I say to my son all the yeah. time, don't worry about your sisters. <laughs> Stay focused on you. Yeah, I kind of like that. <laughs> um, so in John chapter 21, at the end of the book of John, verses 19 to 25, um, after Jesus asked Peter, this is after the resurrection, after Jesus cooked some breakfast on the beach, North Shore of the Sea of Galilee, um, the last thing he does is he has to basically admonish Peter who's worried about John. And so Peter keeps asking Jesus, you know, well, hey, what about John? You know, Jesus like Peter, mind your own business. I mean, keep, <laughs> keep to the work that I called you to do. But, but, but what about John? Peter, mind your own business. So if you read Matthew, or John 21 verses 19 to, to the end of the chapter it's this interesting and that's how the book closes it's like this interchange between jesus and john or peter where jesus is telling peter peter you got to keep your eyes on your own work and quit worrying about what john's doing over there mm -hmm. so don't be distracted i don't know if he had hd whatever <laughs> yes i know attention dump it as a disorder or whatever he had but uh, he Squirrel. just <laughs> yeah he couldn't stay focused um so so there are passages which tell you don't be a busy body, body pointing your nose into everybody's business seeing what you can find asking questions so you can find dirt on them or information you can pass on to others because because then that's gossip yeah okay but uh, that does not mean that you aren't supposed to pay attention to your brother or sister in christ because in first corinthians 12 13 we are all baptized into the body of christ so we're all members of each other so just as you would pay attention to your body, whether it was doing something it shouldn't do, and you would address it quickly, uh, so you would you would you would address things in the in the Christian body if something was awry. So so being mindful of your own business and not getting into somebody else's business doesn't mean that you would never say anything, because there might be times when you might have to do things. And so if you go through the New Testament. There's one another commands all throughout the New Testament. Uh, and those one another commands tell you what you're supposed to do as a body member. So just because you're supposed to mind your own business doesn't mean you're not supposed to take care of business. So uh, Romans 12.10 says to love one another and all that that entails, it's agape love, it's selfless love. Uh, we're supposed to love each other. Well, love each other means I have to get into your life and, and mind some of your business. Um, Romans 12 16 says we are supposed to regard each other show regard for each other put each other first That means I have to be in your life um, 
Romans 14, 19 says we are supposed to build up each other, to encourage each other. You can't encourage if you don't know something about somebody's life. Mm -hmm. But you're encouraging. A person who's being a busybody is not about encouraging. Right. And they're not about loving. Right. Um, Romans 15, 14 says we are to admonish each other, which means when you see sin, you are supposed to say, hey, mm -hmm. and I'll love you enough to say something about that. Um, I had a situation like that the other day where it was risky to say something, but something needed to be said. And then once something was said, then then there was respect because it was wrong. And the person you know, realized it was wrong and was appreciative that somebody loved them enough to say something about it. Right. So uh, you can't just use Paul's mandate, 1 Thess Thessalonians 4, 10 to 12, to say I'm not supposed to be mindful of what anybody's doing. I'm just not supposed to be a busybody about it. Right. Just all consumed with finding stuff out about it, like I pass on to other people and, and, and put on Facebook. And did you know this about so and so? Um, but but if it's a Christian brother or sister, I'm supposed to totally know mm -hmm. what their needs are, the hopes, their joys, things they that are you know facing that are difficult, whatever, so that I can pray with them, so that I can admonish them, so that there's balance. Right. Okay. And then in, in uh, Matthew. Uh, in Matthew 7, where Jesus says, you know, judge not that you not be judged, which is always misquoted by non-Christians to basically say, don't, you know, you can't judge me. Um, <laughs> that's not what Jesus said. So Jesus is against unjust criticism of somebody's life, meaning if you are guilty of a sin, you can't then whip somebody else with it if that's your sin. But that doesn't mean you, you couldn't judge them if you're not guilty of that sin. And so to judge somebody of sin, whether it's a non-Christian or a Christian, means you are being mindful of them, but not in a busybody way. You're wanting to guide them to holiness. Mm -hmm. So Paul says, or Jesus says, just don't do it in a hypocritical way. So if I have a problem with anger management, and I see you have a problem with anger management, which I don't think you do, but, <laughs> but if you did, uh, I, I can't come to you and go, you know, you need to get your act together when you're in traffic. I mean, I saw you there like a wild monkey inside the car. I, I can't do that because that, that's my sin. But I can't be mindful if it's not my sin. Mm -hmm. So there's balance. Right. So there, there are biblical passages which talk about boundaries and respect, uh, but it doesn't mean that you, that you can't ever step into their life. Mm -hmm. You're called to step into their life because we're members of, in, in the body. It's like the other day I was working in my yard and I was cutting a piece of electrical tape as I was doing... Uh, Playing, uh, electrical uh, voltage cable for uh, putting lights in my trees, upward lighting in my trees. And so I had a, I was on the ground, and I was, had a piece of electrical tape, and I was pulling it really tight, and I had an X-Acto knife. And I was cutting like this with the blade toward me. Well, I went right through it, and I cut the back of my hand right there. This was not pleasant, because it was, it was a razor blade. So I realized when I was cut, I was like, oh, that really hurt. Uh, and my hands were covered in mud and everything, so it's like, it took a while for blood to show and stuff, but like, but I didn't want to repeat that one again. I was very mindful of, I just hurt myself, and I've got to figure out how not to do that the next time. So I turned the blade the opposite way and cut the opposite direction so it didn't cut me anymore. So it's the same thing. It's mindful. It's balanced. Mm -hmm. So um, being careful between those two poles. So that's a good 